I'm Griffin and this is Mari and today we're going to be um, seeing what bugs we find in the river. Yeah, we're going to look a little bit at water quality. Um, one way to tell is to see what kind of macroinvertebrates. That's just a fancy name um, for bugs that are big enough to see but they're pretty small. Um, and in this case, benthic macroinvertebrates, ones that live in the water. So we made um, a few new pages for our journal. Um, that you'll be able to print off that allows you to kind of take tallies of some of the most common bugs and we have some identification keys that you can use as well. So we're going to look at the macroinvertebrates we find and see if they are intolerant of pollution, somewhat intolerant, fa fairly tolerant, or very tolerant. So something that's important to remember here is if they're intolerant, that means they can only live in the cleanest water. In addition, we thought we might look at the speed of the water. Um, you can see here we're by a pool of water that's not very fast moving. And then there's some places where the water is still flowing. When the water flows, it tends to get more oxygen in it, which is good for those bugs. Um, and so the macroinvertebrates. And so we might see um, also, uh, how many plants or algae are living in there? So when you look for macroinvertebrates, it's the first thing you want to do so that you don't muck up the water or send them downstream. So Mari is going to go ahead and put a little water in her bucket, and Griffin too. And Mari is going to find, she wants to do the method where you look for some rocks. So she's going to find some rocks in our kind of calm pool here and scrape them off into there and see what bugs she finds. Griffin is gonna leave his water here and we are gonna scrape some rocks into the net. Um, and we're gonna do this. So Mari, go ahead and find your rocks and put them into your bucket. I'm gonna hold the net down. Griffin's gonna find some smaller rocks and he's gonna scrape them right into the net. These nets are the ones that we made in our earlier Thursday video and we've used them for um, insects that are in the air. You can also go ahead and put your homemade nets in the water. Go ahead, you're going to scrape the rocks into it. I'll hold the net for you. You want it kind of going downstream. You don't want to put the rocks in. You want to scrape them with your hands mm -hmm. right into here. So you put them, yeah, you put them between the net so that the bugs go into the net and you scrape them off into the net. This is good. You do it for maybe a minute or two and then you want to take your net this can get your bucket. Now you gotta find more rocks in that sweetie. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, fill it up. You need a lot of water in there. So with this method, you wanna make sure you get all the bugs off of your net. So you turn it inside out. Here, I'll help you hold. And then you try to get all the bugs into the creek water that you have in your bucket. They love to stick to the net, so you really got to try to get them off. The light colored nets are great because they can help you see what's still left on there. Okay. You got it, bud? Okay, you yep. go take it to a spot where you can you can use your ice cube tray, your spoon, or and your eyedropper. So these are great. We just have these plastic kind of shoe buckets. They each have an ice cube tray to, so that they can separate out some of their bugs. And then... They have um, some eyedroppers and plastic spoons. This one, do you see? These are caddisflies stuck on here. We probably don't want to peel too many of them off. These are super cool bugs that secrete a glue-like substance underwater. And then, oh, yeah, that is a mayfly or a stonefly. Let's go ahead and look at that one. Here, can you get your bug, um, your ice cube tray? Yes, I will get it. So anyway, the caddisflies secrete a glue-like substance and then they make these shells that are, um, yeah. we're gonna put water in them. These guys can't live very long without water. So, go ahead. It's kind of good. Can you hold it? Yep. Uh, okay. So, here we go. Here is our, let's see. You see them? Yeah, I see. Yeah, so anyway, the glue-like substance and they um, they make a little home like a hermit crab and they make it out of whatever's on the bottom 
of the river because that way they blend in. So here's one and it just looks like the little pebbles, right? That are on the bottom of the river. But there's actually a little bug living in there. A little, little oh. bug. Look more, here's another one you found. See, you found some. Let's see if we can get that one off. What is it? Um, I don't know. We're, we're gonna have to use our identification key, right? So, in this method, you just kind of look and they're really camouflaged into the rocks. So you gotta either scrape the rocks and see what swims, or look at every rock and see if there's any tiny things. You can bring a magnifying glass if you want. You might want to find one or two more bigger rocks. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Look at that. Let's go ahead and put a little more water in here. So you don't need huge rocks. These kind of size rocks are perfect. This is what they love to live on. I think we'll just count the caddis flies on here so we don't hurt them. But do you see, you have a lot more. I just picked up a rock. Yeah, just pick up the rock. See what's on there, huh? There you go. So you can use the dropper to suck up the fast swimming ones. Oh, uh, there he is. Yeah. So a note for parents who are doing this with kids, really just focus on the parts that they like. I wouldn't worry about filling out all the pieces of uh, any of the data tables unless they're really into it. Um, but go ahead and focus uh, on what your kid is interested in in the moment. Okay, so Griffin's uh, example, did you have a lot or a few bugs? A lot. Yeah, he has a lot. And we still haven't even managed to pull them all out of here. The longer it sits, right? The more we keep seeing things swim. Like there's another mayfly. 11 mayflies. Yeah. So there's another shrimp. He swims really fast. These are little tiny shrimp. They swim fast, fast. Yeah. So let's go ahead and look in here. So Griffin, what's this one? Do you remember? A caddish fly. No. A stone fly. A stone fly, yeah. And in this other one is a stone fly also. But, but he's, it's a lot smaller. Yep. He's a newer stone fly. And then, what are these little things that swim really fast? A water penny. Yeah, maybe a water penny. In here, you have a bunch of mayflies. You have a couple worms. They're really tiny and hard to see. Here's one of those shrimp. When you touch them, they swim so fast. They look a little like the mayflies because they have that kind of fluffy tail. But yeah. look at how differently they swim, huh? Yeah, and yeah. they look different. Yeah, they look different. The mayflies are different. The mayflies and stoneflies look similar, but what's the difference? Um, the, the mayfly has three tails and the stonefly has two. Yes, and mayflies tend to be a little feathery on the back, especially as they get bigger. Yeah. And then what about this guy? Do you remember what he was? Um, Dob Dobson. Dobson, yeah. And then in here, you had two of those ones that make their shells. What are those? Caddisfly. Caddisfly. So Griffin tallied them up on a sheet, and what what do you think about this water after looking at what you found? It's um, it's clean. Is there any much pollution in it? Do you think? No. No. And they must have pretty cold temperatures and oxygen, all the things they need. Yeah. And what did you see a lot of on the rock? Do you know what this kind of um, algae? Algae, yeah. And why and why do you think the algae is important? Um, because that. Uh, it is because it grows when there is a lot of nutrition in the river. Yeah, but who uses it? The bugs. Yeah, first. yeah. A lot of these bugs are eating it. Some of them will eat other bugs. Okay. Awesome. So our river is pretty healthy, huh? So you want to make sure we don't want to kill any of these bugs that are really important for the ecosystem. All these macroinvertebrates. So Griffin is going to carefully put his back where he found them. So. Go ahead and just rest it right in the water and let them swim out. Here's another mayfly and another mayfly. Oh, fly. There's a little one. Yeah. And did you find a lot of these caddisflies that yeah. make their homes? Um, I tallied them down and put them away. Okay. Put them where I found them. Yeah, it's important to keep them cool in the river, huh? Because yeah. if you leave them out in the sun too long, they won't do well. They like cold water. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, I found, found a, a bunch one. of those. But, um, oh, he's almost green. Yeah, I found a bunch of those 
and um, I set them in there, but I didn't scrape them, and I couldn't really scrape them into the tray. Yeah, that looks a lot like this one. Do you think it's another Dobson? Wow, it's a big Dobson. Yeah, but they both have red heads. That one's a little green. So what do you think about the watermark? It's cool. Is it clean? Yeah. Yeah, is there much pollution in this water? Mm -hmm. No, how do you know? Because what did you find? Mayflies don't fly caterpillars. Yeah, can they deal with pollution in the water? No. No, they need clean, cold water. Go ahead and test the water flow. So you can do this, you can look at meters per second. So we have something that floats, like a rubber duck or a little ball. And then we have our meter stick. So let it go. And I started a timer. We're going to see how long it takes to get to the other side. Not coming that fast. Yeah. And if it really doesn't move after a while, you can pretty much say you don't have any flow. It should be about zero. This duck you can't swim a meter very quickly, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nope. All right. So what do you what would you say about this? A flow of uh, zero. zero. Yeah. So we're in the no flow, right? And so the speed was zero. How many macroinvertebrates did you find? Um, did you count them up? Um, Mark, how many did you find? How many did we find? Five, six, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So you found seventeen macroinvertebrates. Right here. Um, All right, seventeen. Seventeen. One seven. Thirty. Thirty. One seven. It's okay. Just put the one in front of it. Okay, did you see plants and algae? Yeah. Yes, go put a Y. There were some algae in there. Yes, Y or yes. Okay, and anything else that you noted? Yeah. What? Uh, Is the water clear? You might write yeah. something like clear water under other observations. Okay, we're in the quick moving water and we have our meter stick here we need to go and Griffin's going to drop it at the top. Ready, set, go. Not even a second. <laughs> Mari found a um, little patch of quick moving water that she's going to do her next sample in. Are you ready to set your duck down? Yeah. Ready? This one will pull it back to you. Okay. Ready, set, go. 2.5 seconds. Not as quick as Griffin, but pretty quick, huh? Yeah. All right. We can go ahead and look for some bugs here and some algae. You doing your fast moving water now? Yeah. So Mar, what did you find? Um, algae. Yeah, while we were looking for a place to sample, Mari found this place with a lot of this orange algae. Good. And is the water really moving here? No. No, it's a place where the water is more or less stopped yeah. moving. Right and now here. Yeah, and now this algae is growing. So we also found in this pool, just above where we did our sample, there's a bunch of tadpoles swimming. Griffin's trying to catch them. They're pretty fast, and these guys are already have their hind legs coming out a little bit. Come on. Yeah. We can walk on land. Yeah, these guys are western toad tadpoles. And when they get out of here, they're mainly going to stay on land after this. So we're going to go over what we found for our river flow. So Mari's fast one was 2.5, it took it 2.5 seconds to go a meter, and yours was less than one second, about a half a second. And then did you guys find more macroinvertebrates in the fast moving water or the slow moving water? The pool. Uh, yeah, in the pool. Which is what the opposite of what we thought usually, right? In the fast white water, you might expect more. Why do you think there was fewer? Um, because there were less fossils. Yep, less places for them to cling on to. It was too cold. Too Probably hot. not too cold or too hot, because but this water is nice and cool. Sometimes pools get really hot, but there's still enough cool water flowing for yeah, for them to live. 
And was there a lot of algae on that very fast moving stuff? Yeah, not quite as much algae. So that was pretty interesting. It's not always what you think. Was it bad data just because it wasn't what we thought? No. No. It was still really interesting. Thanks for joining us today. Please share the macro and vertebrates you found with us. See you next time.